I'm Piper and I'm a sophomore. I'm Dominic and I'm a sophomore. And we're going to be reading Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. On the 15th of May in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There is there is no sound. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp, as if, a, if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton. But who are you? Where? He looked and looked. He could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton. I've never heard tell of a small peck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why? I think that there must be someone on top of the small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who is shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool, he has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small. So, gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air. He lifted the dust bag and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Humph a, humped a voice. It was a sour kangaroo. And the, and the young kangaroo in her pouch said humph, too. Why that speck is, is as small as the head of a pen? A person on that? Why, there has never been. Believe me, said Horton, I'll tell you sincerely. My ears are quite keen, and I heard him quite clearly. I know that there's a person down there, and that, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four, quite likely. A family for all that we know, a family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them, just let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo, and the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell, and the kangaroo is plunged in the cool of the pool. What a terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked the clover and hustled away. Through the high jungle treetops, the news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with a speck on that flower. And Horton walked, worrying, almost an hour. Should I put the speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down, and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Then H Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put in his put his ear near it. My friend came voice, you're a very fine friend. You've helped us all, folks to the dust speck no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors, you've saved all our churches and grocery stores. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped the voice, we most certainly do. I know, called the voice, it's, I, I'm too small to be seen, but I am mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings, to you, would seem terribly small, but to us who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who, and we who's are thankful and grateful for you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town, you're safe now, don't worry, I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers came shouting, what rot, this elephant's talking to who's who are not. They aren't any who's and they don't have a mayor and we're going to stop all this nonsense, so there. They snatched Horton's clover, they carried it off to a black-bottomed eagle named Vlad Vlad Inoff. 
I'm a mighty strong eagle, a very swift wing. And they said, Will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant even could speak, the eagle flew off with the flower in his beak. All that late afternoon and far into the night, the black bottom bird flapped his wings in flash flight, while Horton chased after with groans over stones. This tattered his toenails and battered his bones, and begged, please don't harm all of my little folks who have such much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond, the eagle kept flapping, and over his shoulder called back, quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through, I'm a bird, I don't mind it, and I'll hide this tomorrow where you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning he did it. It was sure it was sure a terrible place that he hid it. He let the small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird, but I think you will fail. And he left with a flip on his black bottom tail. No. I'll find it, cried Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. And clover by clover, by clover with care, he picked up and searched them and called, Are you there? But the clover by clover by clover he found that one that he sought for just was not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005. Then on, through, then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them on, at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell me, are you safe, are you sound, are you whole, are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We really had trouble, much more than our share. When the black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks all have stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chairs smashed, and our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayor, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered, of course I will stick. I will stick by you small folks through, through thin and thick. Pump, pumped a voice. For almost two days, you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who never existed. Such carryings on in our preachable jungle. We've had a quite enough of your bellowing bungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly nonsensical game is all through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And as far as your dust back, ha, that we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, you can't do that. It's full of persons. They'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you are really there. So call a big meeting, get everyone out. Make every who holler, make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in bezel nut stew. And down on the dust peg, the scared little mayor quick called a big meeting in Whoville Town Square. His, and his people cried loudly. They cried out in fear. We are here. We are here. We are here. The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroos surely heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the big kangaroo, was the breeze and a faint sound of wind through the, faint, through the far distant, distant trees. I heard no small voices, and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. Grab him, they shouted, and caged the big dope, lasso his st stomach with ten miles of rope, tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose, then dunk that dumb speck in bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. They beat him, they mauled him, they started to haul. 
him into his cage. But he managed to call to the mayor, don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small, and you very small persons will not die, have to die. If you m make yourselves heard, so come on now and try. Bye. The mayor grabbed a tom tom. He started to smack it, and all over Whoville they lived. Up, they lived up a racket. They ra they rattled tin kettles. They beat on brass pans, on garage pail tops, and cranberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasted great toots on clarinet umpas and boom pas and flutes. Great gusts of loud racket rang high through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky. And the mayor called up through the blowing mad hulaboo. Hey, Horton, who's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back. I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you, are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through the town. Is is everyone there shrieking? Through the town rushed the mayor from east to west, and everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping. But it wasn't enough, all this ruckus and war. He had to find someone to help him make more. He raced to the each building. He searched floor to floor. And just as he felt he was getting nowhere and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through a door that Mayor discovered one trigger. Quite hidden away in the Fairfax Apartments, apartment 12J, a very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo. Not making sound, not a yip, not a chirp, and the Mayor rushed inside and grabbed the young twerp. And he climbed with the lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. The time for all who's who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. But you've got to make noise in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every one voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When they got to the top, the lad cheered, cleared his throat and he shouted up, yup. And that yacht, that one small extra yacht, put it over. Final last from speck on the clover. Their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean, and the elephant smiled. Do you want to see what I mean? They all proved they are persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And now from now on, you know what I'm planning to do. From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how smallish. The end.